Dear writer, you need to quit. This is the show that helps you know what to quit, what to keep, and what to question. My name is Becca Sign. I'm a Gallup certified strengths coach with thousands of hours coaching six and seven figure authors, mid-listers, major award winners, and new authors alike. Because everyone needs to quit something. Anyone can tell you what worked for them. And of course they say it might not work for you, but they can't tell you why. I can tell you why. Welcome to the Quick Cast. Hi, and welcome to episode 11 of the Quick Cast. Today we're going to be talking about a question of premise concept. Again, that's the QTP um, part. If you haven't heard about QTP yet, please do check out the link in the show notes to the episode where I explain the concept of question the premise. But today I want to address a specific QTP that comes up a lot in my Write Better Faster class. The QTP of planning, especially planners. Now I know I'm going to get a lot of pushback on this because a lot of us are planner people. And I just want to say those of you for whom planners are working, I absolutely want to affirm if it's working, right? If it's not broke, don't fix it. If it's working, keep doing it. Um, But for a lot of us who like planners, and I'm one of these people, a lot of us who like planners, they don't actually work for me. They don't actually make me more productive. And I spent a lot of years feeling like there was something wrong with me because I couldn't figure out how to find the right planner. In planner groups, they call this planner piece, right? Like when you find the planner that just kind of hits all your buttons. And one of the issues that comes up consistently in Write Better Faster is how to use planners to be more efficient. And I have this kind of QTP moment with a lot of people about whether or not they should actually use a planner. Because for me, the question, the premise extends also to, are planners actually gonna change the way that your productivity works? Chances are good if you've used a lot of planners in the past. And again, this is the question, the premise. The planner should make me more effective or more productive. But should it? Why? Because somebody who's selling them told you that it should? That's a totally different reason from I've used it in the past or I've used similar systems in the past and they have worked, but not everyone is going to be more effective by using a planner. And there's a couple of reasons for this. The first is, if you happen to be very data responsive, and there are different personality designations for this, but let's not get into that for the moment. If you're extremely data responsive, which means that when you see something, you want to respond to it, and you see something, you want to respond to it. On the opposite end of that spectrum is data controlling, right, where you see a piece of data and you get to decide whether you're going to respond to it or not. And those are two very different personality traits. So when you are extremely data responsive, when a book is closed and it's on your desk, you're less likely to open it and look at it and have it make an impact on how you structure your day. And so if you're very data responsive, having a closed planner that just sits somewhere is not going to help to make you any more productive, no matter how pretty it is, no matter how much you enjoy it. And again, I want to separate the, I love to put stickers in my planner and I love pretty things. And I, I do this because I'm craftier because I enjoy it visually. That's a totally different experience from does it make me more productive? If you love doing that stuff, then do it. Absolutely. But know that it's a hobby that you're being creative and it's not actually supporting your productivity, right? So those of you who use planners consistently and they help you, you'll understand this. When you feel like you have, when you're data controlling and you feel like you have a plan and it's all on paper and it's easy for you to follow, then what happens to the data controlling people is if you plan to do it, you'll do it, 
right? Because you're deciding what data you're responding to throughout the day. And again, this is a personality, it's a brain wiring difference. And so you need to understand that there's not something wrong with you, planners don't work for you, but there's also not something wrong with you if planners do work and you're not data responsive. It's just how your brain is wired, right? But if you're data responsive, then planners are going to be less effective. They're going to be less effective. And so for some of us who are data responsive, and again, I say us because this is me, I love planners. I love feeling organized, but they don't actually help me to execute anything. And so a big QTP moment for me, whenever people say that they're, they still haven't found planner piece or they're still looking for the right planner, I always want a QTP and say, should you be using planners? Is that actually the most effective thing for you to help be more productive? Because if you haven't found planners to be executable over a long term, then there's a good chance that they just don't work for you and you need to find a different system to get things done. So for those of you that planners work for, right? Awesome, great. Then those of you that planners don't work for, then how do I execute? How do I get things done, right? Well, there's a couple of things at play specifically with when you are data responsive, how do I make sure that I get things done? Number one is you are always going to think that you can get more done than you can. This is just part of being data responsive. If there are a lot of reasons behind it. If I have time to find these articles, I'll put them in the show notes and I may keep editing the show notes. Um, on this particular one to put more articles in there just so you can see what I mean by this. This is partly important to know so that when you do think you can do more than you can, that you don't feel guilty when you get it, don't get it done because that's just how your brain works. It's, it's how you're wired, right? And a big piece of the better, faster concept is accepting how you're wired and letting yourself be the way you are and not trying to be like someone else, right? Again, question the premise. So if you're consistently overestimating what you can get done, then you're always gonna put more on your to-do list and more on your planners than you can do. And it's actually gonna make you really overwhelmed. And then when you don't get things done, then you feel the essential pain, right? So there's, you may get overwhelmed and then not work because you're overwhelmed by all the things that there are to do, or you may get overwhelmed by the essential pain because you know that you can't finish these things and then you get that hit of essential pain and then you go to Facebook or you go to Netflix or whatever it is, whatever it is that you're using to soothe yourself, right? So if you're highly data responsive, that's one piece of it is that you're, you're probably overestimating what you can get done. It's not a super big deal in normal life because eventually there are things that have to get done and they will time pressure you and you'll just execute them and you'll be fine. But when it comes to things like a publishing world, right, where you really need to be executing certain things, then you need to be able to prioritize, right? And this is where I like, oh yeah, it was an interview with Tim Ferriss and Ryan Holiday in the audiobook for The Obstacle is the Way. So by the way, if you haven't read that book, I highly recommend, and I love the audio version, but um, he was talking about how he used, Ryan Holiday uses an index card and he writes these uh, three priorities for the day on it. And that's what he keeps in front of himself. And anything else that he gets done is great, but he always knows what it is that he has to get done that day, those three important things. And so that's one of the things that data responsive people can use to help themselves execute is to be able to set priorities that need to get done today and keep those things in front of you. Because when you're data responsive, you're going to respond when something comes at you and you need to limit as much as possible the data that comes at you. Again, this is why I suggest that data responsive people don't go on Facebook first thing in the morning because then all the data has derailed them and they're done for the day. They're, they're focus is done for the day. And so being able to focus and prioritize is super important for data responsive people because it'll help you feel more in control of what you're getting done. So there's that piece of being data responsive is that you often overestimate how much you can get done. The other piece is the actual responding to the data, right? It's that if you see something that needs to get done, you go and do it. If you think of something that needs to get done, you go and do it. And that's 
part of why the planner doesn't work for you. And so there's two pieces at play for me here. One is sometimes you need to clear everything out of your head and get it all down on paper and just know that, know that it's there. This is hard to explain without getting into a super big ton of personality stuff. And if you're super interested in this, there's going to be a link to the registration for the next Write Better Faster class in the show notes so that you can go and deal more with this and delve more into this. So I'm just going to give you the kind of high points today because I do want you to be able to take away some executable stuff. But if you're interested, again, please go register for Write Better Faster. It is much more in depth than this. But when you're data responsive, you have these sort of two options. You either may need to clear your head and get all of your stuff out on paper so that you can see it, or you may need to do this sort of postcard thing, like the Ryan Holiday and Tim Ferriss thing, where you're putting the priorities in front of you and all you're thinking about is what you actually need to get done for today. There's a piece of being data responsive that when you have a lot of things to do, you need to be able to sort them and sorting them in your head is probably not going to be the easiest thing for you. And so again, I highly encourage you. There are a couple of methods. There's one um, that's being taught right now called the SB90 that is a uh, Kanban board system that's really good for sort of getting everything out on paper. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. I'm not sure if she has her next class up available for registration yet, but if she doesn't, then I'll give you a link to her uh, website at least so you can see that. But that system will at least help to get all of the clearing out. And so this is the other piece that I want to say that if planners don't work, if systems don't work for you, that is okay. You can still be productive. If you're the kind of person who will buy a planner and use it for a while and then it doesn't work long term, or you try this class or this system and you try it for a while and it doesn't work long term, that's okay. You're probably data responsive. And that means all you need to do is keep getting back on the bandwagon of whatever it is that works the best for you. The thing that you shouldn't do if you're highly data responsive is just keep going after these classes and these programs and these products, especially products especially products. At least with classes, you have an instructor who will talk with you and try and help you through the process and try and solve your problems. Even if they don't know why you're, do, you're not able to do what you can do, that's okay. They can still be responsive with you and help you through it. But if you have products only, all you're doing is trying the exact same thing with a different product. It's the same system. It's the planner system, which is not working for you. And again, if it doesn't work, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with you. You can still be effective and efficient. It's just, you need to know how your own brain works in order to get this done. This is why QTP of planners for me is so important because I coach and teach so many people who get so frustrated that they can't execute the way that other people execute and they feel like they're broken and there's something wrong with them and there's nothing wrong. They're just not wired to do that sort of very structured, very linear thinking kind of planning. They may not even be structured to do the sort of in the middle brainstorming, you know, like the Kanban system, which can work for either types of people. Um, the SB90 system, I've seen work for both people who are data responsive and for data controlling. But if you have certain types of data responsive brains, there is no system that's going to fix that. There's no system that's going to work long term. And so my encouragement for people who are wired like that is to stop looking for a system that's going to fix you. There's nothing wrong with you. There are ways that you can be effective if you understand with your brain how you can lim either place limits on your data responsiveness or focus the data responsiveness or find a wall calendar or a board that will help you that you can see and look at that you will respond to when you see it, right? Like you want to take the pieces of your personality that are the most prominent like that and you want to make them work for you instead of against you. When you're a data responsive person trying to use data controlling systems, you're making your brain work against you. You're using the wrong system. And again, alignment is super important, right? It's super important. And so 
thank you so much for watching this, the QTP of planners. I know this was a lot to throw at you. It's a lot of information and it is not easy to figure this stuff out, but if you have questions, please ask them below. I absolutely think that it is worth the time to figure this stuff out to help yourself to be in better alignment. And if you are looking for more information on how to get this done, there are a couple of classes coming up here. One is the Write Better Faster class, which is the sort of original productivity or author systems class that I teach to help you be able to get more in control of your personality alignment. And that's coming up in May. There's a link in the show notes. I also have a Strengths for Writers class, two different cohorts that are starting in uh, the coaching cohorts that are starting in April, in mid-April. And if you're watching this after April 2019, then there should be a link to the website where you can find additional classes. But in the Strengths for Writers class and in Write Better Faster, what I try to do is to help you figure out with your personality, how do you align your systems so that you can be at your most productive and at your best. And so please do take advantage of these. It's so important to understand your why and to understand what's going on in your brain and how you can make your systems be the most efficient for your author life. And so again, thank you so much for watching this. If you would like to see more QTP, please ask about specific things in the comments. And the other piece is, I wanna just put a quick plug in for the Patreon. We had a really great live session last week with the Patreon addicts. If you are interested in having access live to me so that you can ask me questions, you have an opportunity on the Patreon to sign up for the addicts level and to get into the live Q and A's that I do every month. And if you are interested in that, please click on the link in the show notes and go take a look at more of it so you can see what that would entail. But I want to give you access to allow you to ask questions when you have them and for me to be able to answer them. And so please do check out the Patreon. We have a lot of content over there. There's more videos. We do a talk back after every podcast. And then I collate those and put them through episodes on the Patreon only for Patreon users. So if there's anything that I forgot to talk about, or if I want to add things to that, then I do those in the talk back videos. And you can do those in the top two levels in the Patreon. You'll have access to those. So please do check that out. In the meantime, next week, we're going to do more strengths for writers. Yay. And so I will see you in the next quick cast. <laughs>